Hey guys, James Graves here and yes, we are back to tutorials today and it's a good one. It's one that I've been looking forward to making for ages and I've had loads of questions about, so I think you guys are going to love it. I've had a few questions now about this here leather wallet that I made a few months ago. I've posted about it on Instagram and Facebook and people are wondering how I made it, so I thought why not tell you? Well, actually I'm going to show you. Now this is a minimalist wallet. You can fit actually up to five cards in here and it just fits really slim line. You see I've got a pocket clip on there as well that I made, but the wallet itself it's super super slim but the best thing about this wallet is it's made using just a single piece of leather and you can make this at home on your own with tools that you've got in the house already now the reason i didn't make this video earlier back when i first made this is because i wanted to spend a good few months with this try it out see how it ages whether there's any design flaws that i wanted to play around with anything i wanted to tweak but i've had absolutely no issues with this wallet i've loved carrying it day in day out for the past few months it's aged really well it's patinaed really nicely and it's just ended up being even softer and smoother than when I started. So I'm bringing this to you guys today so you can make your very own wallet for yourself, for a friend, for a family member, as a Christmas present, whatever you like. You can make this in probably half an hour using some basic tools that you've got at home. Now the first and potentially only thing that you guys need to buy to make this wallet is a decent piece of leather. I'm using Crazy Horse leather which is about 2 mil thick and it's just really really nice leather to work with. It looks really good, it ages really well and it's super tough. So I definitely recommend using that if you can get it. I'll put a link below to the one that I buy. But feel free to experiment with different types of leather. Just make sure it's thick enough and sturdy enough for what you're going to be using it for. And in terms of size, just need to make sure that your piece of leather is at least 300 mil long and 200 mil wide so that you can make this wallet all in one piece. Now the bare minimum tools that you need to make this are a straight edge ruler of some kind and a sharp knife. I'm using my copper handled hacksaw blade knife that I showed you guys how to make in a previous tutorial but in reality you could use any kind of sharp knife whether it be a kitchen knife or a camp knife or whatever you've got lying around the house. I actually made the first iteration that I've been carrying around for months using nothing but my Camus folding knife. You can also use a rotary cutting tool that's designed for leather and these things are great they're really sharp and they cut really really well but they're best for straight lines and I much prefer using a knife for the intricate little shapes that we've got in this wallet and the curves that are involved. But if you don't have any of these things and all you've got is a nice sharp pair of scissors, then you can use that as well and you'll still get a good result. Now, if you want to take your wallet to the next level and just finish it off really, really nicely, then there's a couple of optional tools that you can get as well. The first is an edge beveler, which just takes the edge off the leather and takes away some of that harsh squareness that you see once you've cut. The second is an edge slicker, which is what allows you to smooth off and harden and kind of seal in the edges a little bit. And this just gives your edges a really nice sleek finish and prevents them from fraying. And the final thing you need is, of course, your template, which I have linked below. You guys can download that for free as many times as you like. You'll see in this video that I'm using a hand-drawn one, but the one that you guys can download is one that I drew up on the computer, so it's all nice and precise, and everything is bang on where it needs to be. Now, the first step in making your leather wallet is to decide which piece of the leather you want to use. You'll see on mine that I've got these rings all over the place. That's because I've been using this as a coaster, among other things. So I'm not going to use those parts. I'm going to make sure that I've got a nice corner that I can use where I'm avoiding any of those rings. Then place your template nicely in the corner so it's all square. Then take your knife and without cutting all the way through, just scribe along those lines to mark out where those lines are going to be onto your leather. If you're using a rotary cutting tool, you could probably get away with cutting all the way through at this point. Just be sure as you're doing this that you're holding that template firmly in place all the way through. Once you've scribed over all the lines, take your template away and then cut all the way through. The next step is to take your straight edge and fold over the sides of the wallet as you can see here. Be sure to apply a good amount of pressure to these folds so that the leather remembers them in future. Once you've got all these folds done, fold the wallet into its final form so you can check that everything fits as it should. Now you've confirmed everything fits together, unfold the wallet again and take the outer two flaps and fold them over one another. Mark out where the tab meets the other side of the leather with a pencil or something pointy and then cut a thin line between the two for the tab to slot into. 
Now that you've got your slot cut out, fold everything back together and make sure that it all fits, widening that slot if necessary. Now the reason I haven't included that slot on the template is the position can vary very slightly depending on the thickness of the leather you've used and where you folded the edges, so it's a lot more precise if you can mark that out for yourselves once you've cut and folded everything into position. Now the second and final thing that you guys are going to have to mark out for yourselves is the finger slot that allows you to pick out the card more easily. So get everything folded together, press down on the wallet and make sure it's firmly in position where it will be once it's been sat in your pocket for a while, and just mark along the existing finger cutout onto the next piece of leather using a pencil. Again, I haven't put these on the template for the same reason as before, it's really important that these line up perfectly otherwise it's just going to look off. Now I'll cut this out and then repeat the same thing again for the third piece of leather. I used this wallet for a while without this finger cut out and it made it a lot more difficult to get the cards out. With it there, it's just really, really easy. Now, depending on how much time you guys want to spend on this wallet, what sort of finish you're after, what tools you've got accessible to you, you could actually stop right there. This is a working wallet. This is actually the finish that a lot of manufacturers will, will finish to. They won't go any further than that. They'll stamp out a piece of leather, assemble it, and then that's it. So you could stop there, feel proud of a job well done, put it in your pocket and start using it right away or give it to your friend or family member, wherever you want. But if you're looking to take this just a little step further and get a really polished look, then follow the next few steps. You want to start off with a light edge beveler and just go around all the exterior edges of your leather. So once you've beveled all your edges, you want to get out your edge slicker. Now there are a couple of cheap substances you can get for slicking edges, but personally I've got my own method of doing these which doesn't involve buying any of those things. Now some people say that you can use water, when I use it anyway it just softens up the edge and causes it to break up and it makes it worse. So I actually like to do this dry but I've got a little secret technique, all I do is get a piece of beeswax and rub it into the edge slicker. I don't know if this is an approved technique, I've never seen anyone else do it, it's just something that I came up with, probably because I've got a cheap edge slicker which is a bit rough so it helps it just smooth off the edge of that a little bit better if it's got a bit of wax on there. So you don't need to do this, you can actually work with just the slicker dry and you still get really good results. But beeswax is one of those things that costs basically nothing and if you ever buy a cheap beginner's leather working set it pretty much always comes with a block of it. So that's completely optional, you can also just do it dry if you want to, but that's a little tip that I found works for me. All you do now is get your edge slicker and work along that edge, making sure you're applying pressure evenly all the way along and spending roughly the same amount of time on each section. Now for getting in those tight square corners, again this I don't think this is an approved thing, I've never seen anyone else do it, but if you turn the slicker around and just use that pointy end on either side you'll find that it actually slicks it off quite nicely. Now again you could finish here but there's one more optional step. If you've got some kind of leather wax or polish that you can use, I'd recommend applying that now just to protect it and give it a really nice even sheen. If you do happen to have beeswax, then what I like to do is just heat up a little section of it, grab it with a cloth while it's still hot, and then rub that into your leather. This gives it a really nice, smooth, natural finish, and also adds a really good layer of protection to your leather, which ages really, really well. And I can vouch for that because I applied beeswax to mine many months ago, and that protective wax coating is still there to this day, having had it in my pocket every single day ever since. And there you have it, that's all there is to making your very own one piece leather minimalist wallet. Don't forget to fold everything back together and admire your creation. So there you are folks, now you can make your very own leather minimalist wallet using tools that you've got around the house so you've got no excuse not to do it. As you might have seen, I've got a bit of a copper series ongoing at the moment, making things out of copper pipe, and I'm thinking I'm going to probably continue this one now on to doing a bit of a leather series, just showing you guys what you can make for yourself or for other loved ones or other people that you know since it's now coming up to Christmas using just really basic tools like this video today. Now I'm sure you can tell but I'm certainly no expert in leather working. This is something that I actually picked up myself recently and I've only got a few very basic tools but that's why I think this tutorial is so powerful because if I can do it then so can you. Anyway I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something from it. If you did, please do drop it a like and don't forget to comment below what you want to see next time. Do subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to turn on all notifications so that you never miss a video. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you in the next one.
subcode. Who's that, Pippi? Who's that? Hey, what are you doing? That's insurance, I should probably keep that.